YouTubies. I'm leaving Pasadena, going back home. And I thought I would talk to you all about something special. And that is uh, my path into the video game biz. And the other question, do you need a degree to be a video game artist? So first I'm going to tell you how I got into the industry. Um, I started in video games in 1989. And what I was doing before that is, uh, well, some background. 1989, uh, people had, they didn't really have personal computers. I mean, they did, but they were very weak and not too many people had them. The internet wasn't around yet. So finding a job was a little tricky. But, um, so basically what happened is I was working on the school, the college newspaper. My art teacher basically recommended that I go be a cartoonist for the, the school newspaper. So I walked in the same day and asked for the job and they gave it to me. And uh, a writer on that newspaper, this was the Saddleback College Lariat, a writer said he knew or he met a kid that was working on Nintendo games. And I'm like, yeah, right, you know, being all skeptical, thinking, okay, it's probably some 12 year old, you know, with big dreams. Turns out we met, the guy was legitimate, you know, working age adult, really nice guy. And I think I'm going the wrong way. So we had a meet up, got along really great. And it turns out that it was legitimate. The whole opportunity was legitimate. So I was like, fine, let's see where this goes. That's cool. And the company uh, was Color Dreams, and basically, I quit my job. Actually, I'll tell you what happened. I was working at an art store in Irvine called Sterling Art. And I told the manager about my opportunity. And he said, if you don't quit and take that opportunity, I'm going to fire you on the spot. And I'm like, all right, done deal. So it was good, though. He was just kidding around, but he really, you know, he made it clear. Take this opportunity. I took it. Uh, we met with a company, there were a few teams. We were working on reverse engineered Nintendo games. So basically it was a reverse engineered system outside of the normal development cycle that Nintendo had in place with all their fees and stuff. So we started work. It took us, you know, at least three, three or four months or whatever it was. And we were both fledgling game developers. Like I had never developed a game and neither did my friend. Basically, my friend quit his job. I think his job was at Unisys at the time. Pretty good job, stable job. And we set to work and we got our stuff done. And at the end of the project, I actually had to borrow money too. I borrowed like a few hundred bucks from my uh, stepmom at the time. And so that kept us going. Ooh, look at the old cars. And then at the end of the development cycle, they, they handed us each a check for $10,000. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is legitimate now. And I've been doing it ever since. Color Dreams then hired me to work on more games under contract, seven days a week, 12 hours a day. And uh, for 500 bucks a day, it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, that, that money doesn't relate to normal salary. But at that time, it was pretty crazy. But I was under contract to work 12 days a week, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And so I did, and we got a lot done. And that was my introduction into the game biz. Ooh, sunny. So yeah, the first game I worked on was Raid 2020. It wasn't that great, could have been better, but you know, like I said, first game. Um, the way the reverse engineering was, we didn't have a, a dev kit from Nintendo. They actually had to make the dev kit. And the way their dev kit worked, we had to enter in all the pixels and the colors with the Nintendo controller. 
so that was pretty hilarious. So literally, you're like up, down, right, 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 up, down, up, 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 up. Pick a color, black, over, blue, over, blue, over, blue, over, white, over, black, down, black, down, blue, you know. So that's how I do had to do my art. And I put everything on graph paper. Um, every asset had to be drawn on graph paper first, including the animations. So this is like old school. This is the equivalent of like, I had to walk to school in the snow, uphill both ways. So it was really old school. When I could actually use a mouse for graphics, that was luxury. And today I wouldn't dream of using a mouse. I'd use a Wacom, right? Wacom tablet. So this was like the very early days. Had to enter in all the art with a Nintendo controller. Uh, very low budgets. I ended up doing the art, the music, writing, manual illustration, box cover. Like I wore many hats. The only thing I didn't do was programming. And even the music had to be programmed in a sense because I had to do it all in hexadecimal. So I had to take a note, translate that to hex with a Nintendo. And then you'd get like beep 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 you know. And I had to, you know, program the spacing and all that, but I was already into music. And so it was it perfectly dovetailed. Because I already definitely was doing music at that time. So I had a blast, I love it. Loved it. And I kept doing it. Later, when I went to work for Minecraft, I also wore many hats. I was an artist, designer, um, manual art, writing. A lot of that writing came from design. And so that was a lot of fun. And I've enjoyed wearing many hats ever since, even though nowadays you're specialized. Nowadays you gotta be, you gotta pick something. And they even have people that just light all day long. Like, all they do is light stuff, and I, I would not be able to do that. I respect the talent that that takes, but for me, that's too, it's too specialized. Um, and I am specialized. I am a, basically I started as a, I ended up as a character modeler. I started animating, but I realized I don't like animating. Not for work. I mean, I do it if I need to, but animating as a job is not something that I like. Modeling, texturing, love it. Love it, love it. ZBrush, Max, all that good stuff. Now here's the second part of this. Do you, if you're an artist, do you need a degree if you want to get into game development? If you want to be an artist for game development? The short answer is no, you do not. You do not need any kind of degree at all whatsoever. Is a degree helpful? Yes, it is. The reason, I'll, I'm going to explain this. I say no because literally um, art is unique in the sense that your art is as good as the portfolio that you show, right? So if you show a kick-ass portfolio, it doesn't matter if you have a PhD in art, you know, you're good anyway, and if, you're, if, you're, if you suck, it doesn't matter if you have a PhD anyway, right? Likewise, if you have no degree, it doesn't matter, your art is visual, so it's unlike being a doctor or some other kind of job where they need to know that you have credentials to cut an animal open, cut a person open, or whatever, and do what you need to do. Art is purely visual. So if someone likes your art, they're going to hire you. And uh, so what I, there's many schools of thought here, but a lot of what you do with a degree has to do with how the person learns. Like, is the artist the type of person that learns best on his or her own? Or is it someone that likes to be taught a lot of things? Now I'm going to tell you, someone who learns on their own is going to do far better than someone who has to be taught everything. Okay, so no matter what, you got to be a self-learner. So if you can learn on your own and spend the money you would normally spend on tuition, spend it on ZBrush and a, and a licensed copy of Max or Maya. I wouldn't recommend anything else either, by the way. I'd recommend Max or Maya because those are the biggies and Autodesk owns both and most companies are using those. You're probably a little safer with Maya, but I, I, I cut my teeth on Max. 
So, and I, I don't like Maya, so I use Max. And it also has to do with what you're comfortable with. You might want to try the demos of each and go from there. But you can literally just invest in all the software and a great computer and learn every single thing you need to know to be an artist in the game biz. Now, alternatively, if you want to go to a school and get a degree, you can do that too. You still need to have a portfolio at the end of the day. So whether you do that through a school or on your own, whatever, you got to have that kick-ass portfolio, which also means you need to know how to make websites or use a turnkey website generator, which lets you deal with assets, but not the actual process of building a site with all the social media connections and all that stuff. And for building a site, nothing is better, in my view, than Squarespace. Now, I'm not paid to say this, but I'm a big fan of Squarespace, and I'm somebody that has built his sites historically or used Flash. Flash sucks because a lot of a lot of devices can't see Flash, mobile being one of them, and Flash is not very good for search engines. So you want search engines to be able to pick up keywords and titles and all that stuff and be able to find your site just with a search. So HTML is going to be way better for search engines. But yeah, so you can literally just buy a great computer. I'm talking about a great computer here, like a, a dual Xeon, 8-core, uh, 16-core, 24-core. Um, this way you can do rendering and high-end stuff, and you can also do video editing using all those uh, processor cores. Once you get all the cores you want, everything else is gravy. Then you can worry about the CPU and everything else. Now you don't really need that much of a computer, but for the amount you spend on tuition, you can get a kick-ass computer and then uh, effectively be able to use V-Ray or whatever and, and have lots of horsepower on tap. So you don't need a degree, but a degree is helpful because a lot of people work, will have degrees. And if someone has a degree and you don't, it might, it might hurt you if your art is identical or same quality. The, different, the difference though is art is almost never the same quality or the same type. And it's all subjective. There's still rules. I mean, you can still judge a good artist from a bad, but what I'm saying is you can have two very good artists for video games and one might still win out just because the art director liked his or her art. And there's other factors too. Um, an artist who's really good and really young and inexperienced has an advantage because you'll usually get paid less and they can mold you a little bit more but you're going to have less experience and someone who has experience is going to cost more and is going to be less moldable. Ooh, stuff in the road right there. Good thing I wasn't lane splitting. So there you have it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm sure I, you know, it's easy to miss stuff when you're vlogging because, you know, I'm thinking about riding here. Uh, let's see what else. So I started in the industry at, at Color Dreams and um, at first I didn't make much money. But then when they hired me on as a contractor to work uh, seven days a week, 12 hours a day, I was making bank for a while and that was fun, but you know, it was basically, we were against the clock basically because there was only so much time to put our little games out and we wanted to get them out as, as quick as possible. And Tengen got sued. Tengen was also reverse engineering the Nintendo 8-bit and they did not do well. They lost their lawsuit. Color Dreams did not get sued, as far as I know, or they, they didn't lose anyway. Anyway, that was fun. So if you want to get into it and you're young, you're very young, you want to get into video games, and you're an artist, well, first thing is work on your art, get really good, work on your sketches, work on your, what the hell? Work on your basic knowledge, right? Work on your anatomy. Anatomy is key, especially if you're a character artist. Even if you're not going to be a character artist and you show good knowledge of anatomy, 
that's still critical because it'll it'll make it so you get hired more easily. Because uh, an environment artist who can do kick-ass characters is more valuable than someone who can't. And it also just makes you a better artist, right? Likewise, if you're a character artist, you, you still got to get good at environments and understand objects and all that stuff. So you want to be well-rounded. A lot of companies look for generalists nowadays. A generalist is just someone who can do everything. From modeling, to textures, to lighting. Nice, look at that gold color. And, uh, you know, everything. That's why they call a generalist. So, you want to think about your specialty, but work on everything so you're flexible. Uh, work on your basic skills. Learning anatomy is really key because uh, if you have bad anatomy in your portfolio, that's you know that's going to make you look bad. Even if you have other good art. And the other thing about building a portfolio is get rid of it, it's quality over content over quantity. So if you have anything that's questionable and you're not sure if it's questionable, run it by a really good artist. But if it's questionable, take it out. Only keep your absolute best stuff in there. Put your best stuff first, because this is not something like a story where you want to build up and build tension and you know hit them with the best thing later. You want to have your very best foot forward, because you're going to get about 15 seconds to capture the eye of an art director who might hire you. Um, and you know, keep working on new stuff always. If you keep working on new stuff, you can you always have better and better stuff, and you can get rid of anything that isn't absolutely top notch. And it gives you more better art to choose from, if that makes any sense. And actually, if you think about it, if you really just want to, if I were to, to mentor somebody, let's say a very talented artist who is still young, I would give him all the same advice, or her. You know, I would say, start your portfolio early, because you may get discovered even when you're not ready yet. And you may get encouragement of the type that really makes you, really spurs you to make some new art as well. Okay, I gotta slow down here. Some shit happening. And, you know, keep, keep building on that portfolio. But don't send out the links to companies until you're absolutely ready. So the portfolio is good because you can send it to friends, family, whatever, other artists, get critiques, join forums, you know, like ZBrush Central is good because you can work on the challenges and all that stuff. Get some honest feedback from the web, from people that don't know you. You want to get honest feedback. Uh, someone besides your mother, basically. Basically, if you can get people that don't like you to say it's awesome, you are on to something. And I would almost, if I were mentoring someone, I would almost just say, you know, first, just try the direct route, right? Get a great computer, get the programs you need, and just start making art. And once you have a good body of work, start applying. In other words, it's the sneaking up approach. You sneak up on the problem without paying all that tuition money. And then if that fails, you can always go to a college or something. But you don't need to go in as an expert game developer. You only need to go in as a kick-ass artist. Everything else you can learn on the fly. And You know, the technology moves so fast that schools are going to have a hard time catching up anyway, or keeping up. That's why the direct approach is pretty good. And if you play games, you kind of know what to expect, right? Like, you know what the level is. And you start small, right? If you're modeling, start... Obviously, you got to learn the modeling program. That takes... It takes a little... It doesn't take that long to learn, but it takes a, a long time to master. Getting comfortable in a 3D program takes a little while. Because at first, it's going to feel very foreign, very unusual. Because I remember the first time I started using 3D, um, I had already been developing games for a while. 
And when I saw 3D, it was scary as hell because I knew everything was changing. And I had already gotten used to 2D. But when I eventually dived in, dove in, um, I loved it. I loved it. It just took me a while. Like first I tried Alias, and that was a hot mess, and I tried a little bit of Nietzscheman. Of course, I couldn't afford those when those were on SGI machines. Those were really expensive in, back in the day, before Windows 95 came out. Do I need gas? So anyway, do it. Try the direct approach. You can also just sign up for a school anytime. And good luck. Keep drawing. Keep programming. Whatever you're doing. Keep designing. And even if you're a tester, testers often become producers. If you're really good, you'll be a lead tester. Also known as QA, quality assurance. And then you can move up to assistant producer, then producer, then executive producer. And, and uh, then you're making the big bugs and you have a lot more control and it's a lot more fun, I think. Once you have a little bit more say and you can use more of your skills. So there you have it. Good luck everybody. I am signing up for now. Take care.